Welcome to the July 16th, 2019 episode of Reactive Consciousness, the in-depth podcast about what happened this week in our lives. I'm your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And Old Man Stompy. What, we oh, have we an actually... actual third person? <laughs> yeah, we actually have three people. Oh, and it's not even <laughs> us saying that there's a third. We actually have a third. Yeah, oh, that did, wasn't did just... You, did you do that? Yes. Yeah, it was like Lotus Prince and Lotus Prince, because it's funny every time we do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I chortled. <laughs> Quick, where what what is chortled a portmanteau of? Um, chunkled and you are close. <laughs> I I don't know. Uh, Chuckled and burbled. <laughs> burbled. Yeah, from the Jabberwocky. Oh, the Jabberwocky is what chortled. I think Lewis Carroll coined that term. Oh, snicker snack. Uh, I don't well, get anyway, it. <laughs> where'd you get that from? Your T-shirt, Eating snacks, <laughs> Snickers, jo- perhaps. Is that, is that a JoJo reference? No, it's a another Jabberwocky reference. Yeah, it's another Jabberwocky uh, I, reference. I I I I know. Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> jokes we get them. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we have a uh, uh, one really big piece of news here that. <laughs> I don't think pertains much to us, but we have to talk about it. We're obligated. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it does a lot. And it, like, I, I don't want to say that it makes me mad because it doesn't. I'm, I'm like happy that no. it exists, but it, no, it, like, I, I'm happy. I'm happy. Is too. A, yeah, it certainly is like an anti-consumer pattern to me. Oh, yeah, the Binding no. of Isaac board game in class. That's what you mean? Yes, yeah. definitely that one. <laughs> gotcha. Shh. Spoilers! Uh, but anyway, <laughs> um, we of course have to talk about the announcement of uh, Nintendo's out- announcement of the Switch Lite. Um, so, with that, um, the Switch Lite, for anybody who hasn't been um, paying attention, uh, is a portable-only version of the system uh, that has some actually really nice colors. Uh, yellow, uh, it- it's like a pastel yellow. Uh, gray and turquoise. Uh, that gray one looks quite nice to me, but um, I can see why the other ones would, would look good to other people. And um, I think they announced one other special edition color as well. Um, and, but it, it um, is not for any of the three of us. Um, you know, there, there, there are a number of things it doesn't have. So, uh, first of all, detachable Joy Cons are are no, uh, no 3D rumble. Um, it's basically very stripped down. Uh, no uh, IR sensor. Well, I'm, uh, I'm surprised they're calling it like regarding what you said. You know, no detachable yeah. Joy Cons. Um, well, I guess the last thing is that it's portable only. Um, yeah. So that kind of makes me wonder. I mean, I, I guess the real answer to this question before I even ask it is going to be branding, so you know what the yeah. hell it is. But it's not a Switch anymore because it doesn't switch. You know, like the 3DS yeah. without the 3D wasn't called the 3DS Lite. It was called the 2DS, you know? Yeah, well, um, Wii U was not just us and them uh so i i, I well, yeah get what well, you well we well the name we you was a major branding gaffe because everyone thought it was a fucking we uh, i mean i i don't think anybody like i i i think that's a very uh niggling problem uh i don't i don't think it's a serious one it can't um, switch vice <laughs> <laughs> i mean you could switch it on so oh. i mean we, we could come up with an excuse but um I, I guess I, I have no problem with this. I, I, I certainly don't want to b- buy it like I buy um, most um, revisions of Nintendo hardware. Most revisions of Nintendo wa- har- hardware are borderline essential. Um, so, I mean, with with the 3DS, I mean, the upgrade, um, you yeah, know, to new 3DS, 3DS was a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and also the, the bigger size before that was a big deal so um and then, well, and then both the new 3ds xl 
Yeah, yeah. So um, the the new 3DS XL was a big upgrade. I mean, it, it it gave you Super Nintendo games on the go. It gave you the um, you know the right thumbstick, which was essential to playing uh, some of the uh, hottest games at the time, including the the Monster Hunter games that were on 3DS at the time. We, I was just going to uh, say, like, better big processing title. power by a lot. Yeah, and better processing power. I mean, you you only had two exclusive games, and they're not really exclusive anymore anymore um uh they never were really exclusive to begin with but uh you had like xenoblade and uh what was it um uh fire emblem heroes uh so yeah uh i mean it that the exclusive games weren't worth it but it was worth it for the conveniences of actually playing the system now this seems more like a like a a a downgrade um, made for people that don't need all of the features of the other one, kind of like the 2DS, which well, I have no problem also, with. Also, the Wii. There was I forgot what it was called, but there was that small Wii mm -hmm. that had. It was only no... sold in Canada, I think. Yeah, um, and it was yeah. Like red. Uh, it had no online capability, but by the time it came out, that didn't no really matter much either. anyway, and it was way cheaper. If you just want to play your Wii discs in your system, then that's probably the best way to go. Yeah, that one I think is it was a was a technical gaffe, and I'll tell you what uh, a big gaffe, and I'll tell you why. Um, lots of people that were non gamers used their uh, Wii's as set top boxes for a very long time uh, oh, just fair. to watch uh, things like Netflix. Um, in fact, uh, at one time the Wii was the number one device um, where Netflix streamed from. So. Um, I, I think that was a miscalculation, um, but I don't think this is. I, I think, uh, first of all, a lower price point of $200 is worth it to some people, uh, especially um, for children. I, I think this is a really good thing for children, uh, especially one uh, children that are never going to have time with the big TV. Um, I, I think it's going to be fine. Um, it, it's basically a, a little sibling system, you know what I mean? Um and hopefully uh, they'll come up with a way that, you know, for people that want to have the convenience of this, a, a smaller profile of a system, hopefully they'll they'll come up with a way to transfer saves easy, easily, maybe with the online um, subscription. Uh, I hope that they come up with a plan like that. It's Nintendo, so I'm not super hopeful. Um, but, you know, uh, that would be th probably the best thing, is, like, for, for people that really want to... <laughs> You, um, have an ultra convenient version of the Switch uh, for for just portable use only. There are plenty of people that exclusively use the system as a portable system. Um, I think this is really good. Um, uh, it, it certainly is not for me, though. Uh, I will not be buying it. Um, but I have a feeling that there will be an upgraded version um, sometime soon. I don't know what what kind of form that's going to be, whether it's going to be a console only, which also should not be called a Switch, but, you know, who yeah. cares? And by the way, I would take the console only version. Yeah, I, I know you would. Um, I mean, that would be a re really nice addition, especially for, um, you know, games that have uh, trouble with, uh, you know, frame rate and things like that. Um, but uh, I can see plenty of people just buying this as a, as a, as a Christmas gift for their kids. Uh, especially with a new Pokemon coming out and things like that, I think this is a good thing for Nintendo to do. I I, I don't I don't feel butt hurt that it isn't for me. Um, I think it's good to have options. So well, I mean, you already um, have a Switch, so it's it's not yeah. like you you didn't you like. I, when am I going to get the new Nintendo system? Oh damn it! Like you like who cares if it's not for you? You already have a Switch. I mean, and it is nicely designed. I, it has a very nice uh, D pad. Um, n notably, one of the weaknesses of the. Uh, regular switch um it does not have a, a good d-pad in the slightest um so uh i i think this is this looks good uh, I'm, I'm interested to hear what old man stompy has to say because he has uh, a really good insult about uh, insight about um <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I guess he hates uh, it, yeah. yeah really good insults to, <laughs> to me personally but um <laughs> switch light more like switch off <laughs> uh, insights in, in, into the way that you want to see hardware go so uh, oh, i'm interested well, to hear what you have to say I, I mean we mentioned this a little bit beforehand like before the show uh, you know, part of the reason why I was like slightly sour grapes about this, even though I knew it would happen, was because this is the Switch that I would have bought if I had had the option mm -hmm. to do it when the Switch came out. I, um, like, I, I play consoles and handheld and PC, like, depending upon, um, you know, what the situation demands. You know, like, I'm, 
I, I am not afraid to own like a piece of hardware if that has the games I want to play on it. That doesn't usually stop me from buying something. But for the most part, like for my entire life, especially because I move around a lot, I've always been a handheld gamer. And there aren't a lot of gaming hardware companies now that the 3DS and the Vita are both pretty much completely out the door who are, are making, you know, dominantly handheld systems. Uh, I have discussed before when we talked about the Switch hardware that, you know, the Switch's big selling point and what nin how Nintendo always, like, structures their business model is they, they try to find something which, you know, they try to carve out a, a unique space in the gaming market, and they figure out a price point that will make their system affordable to a lot of people, which is great, and they basically give you just enough hardware to accomplish your goal in their first iteration. That's always been their their model. The, the Wii, the Wii U, the GameCube, they've always been models that came in at a lower price point that makes them more accessible to people, which is awesome. Um, you know, they've always had a lot of, and, and a lot of that money has, the, you know, in the manufacturing system has gone into, like, all the bells and whistles, like the Wiimote, you know, like the motion controls, like the Wii U monitor, you know, like this, the Switch mode for the Switch. Um, sure. And what that meant is, for the Switch, you know, you had this capacity to turn it into a handheld, it's the closest thing to a handhold, handheld dedicated gaming device that we have in the current market but it's not very good at doing that it's it only has a couple of hours of battery life it's a really big system to carry around with you uh, like not that i've ever had a problem like with my wrists or something like for the couple of hours even if i'm playing with it like plugged in but it's a very big and awkward system it's not easy to carry around it requires its own carrying case it's not like a handheld that you can put in your pocket like a 3ds Sure. And, like, the Switch Lite, like, is the system that I wanted the Switch to be. Um, of course, you know, it's nice to be able to put the Switch, especially with some of the more visually lush games like Breath of the Wild, like Xenoblade, like uh, Yoshi's Crafted World, and put them on the big screen in HD, and that's really nice. Uh, and certainly, since I already own the, you know, the standard Switch, I wouldn't trade that away. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, if you know, we, we, we knew this would happen. We knew this would be a, there would be a hardware iteration. Nintendo's always done this. It's the direction that the market is moving in. You know, all the consoles go through some degree of iteration, um, especially now. Like as of as of last generation, all the consoles get some significant functional upgrade. You know, all the systems get some big like the PS4 Pro. You know, like the Project Scorpion. All these new. Um, uh, uh, it's it's normal for a console to go through hardware iterations. Sure. So we knew that this, that this would happen. They usually um, go through two or three um, right. during their during their cycle, and usually a, a final vestigial one that like streamlines it maybe. Sure. Um, but doesn't so, add a whole lot. So we knew that. So we knew as early adopters of the Switch that there would be a hardware iteration that was either a better console or a better handheld system or both. And this happens to be the better handheld system. Sure. And I still might wind up buying one just in case, like, my wife and I want separate Switches to play Animal Crossing or Pokemon against each other. Um, but that's, like, a pretty unique circumstance. And I would be, like, I would be the one who would most likely play it as, um, as, as the handheld system just because that's the kind of game I like to play. Sure. And I already have, like, all my accounts and files and everything on the original Switch. So probably we won't wind up getting it. <laughs> See, I, I think it would be actually kind of funny because, like, uh, the way that I would like it in the perfect world is if I had, um, like, it, it synced kind of like, you know, Steam does from machine to machine, and mm -hmm. um, I had two separate devices, like a really good console and and the really good portable and and not the middle device. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so for the for the Switch Online, we bought the family plan so that my sister could get on it because it's really a good value. You know sure. it's 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 less than half the price of buying it for two people and you can put up to ten Nintendo IDs on it, I think. Um, so it made a lot of sense for me to buy the family online plan for myself and gift it to my sister as a birthday present. Um, that means that we'd be covered for the Switch Online if I chose to add another system and make a new Nintendo ID. I just wouldn't get my purchases, I think. Sure. So, like, that's a bit of a pain, but, you know, we'd we'd work it out. I don't own a lot of non-physical Switch games like you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you looked at my, uh, so, at my yeah, Switch yeah, library. So, yeah, we were, we, were uh, we were at Vice's yearly barbecue. I don't know how much of a topic we have on that this week. I don't want to spoil the, bury the lead too much. Um, yeah. But I, I like uh, there, there was definitely a point where while the rest of us were being social, 
I was very jealous because Vice was sitting in the corner playing Switch by himself, and I looked over his uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look over looked over his shoulder as he booted the system, and there was just a, a panoply of games. <laughs> A cornucopia, um, but uh, I a, a, fract- um, a fractal of Switch games, <laughs> a hectare, um, <laughs> a veritable smorgasbord. Yeah, yeah, a bounty. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's actually kind of funny because the reason why I was like that is because I was exhausted. I was cooking all day, and like I, I finally got a chance to sit down, and I was like, I finally realized that I was pooped <laughs> from like waking up early, like uh, putting the whole thing together. And and cooking and also talking to people all day, you know, like mm-hmm. I just like my girlfriend's like, why are you playing the Switch? Like, why don't you come be social? And I'm like, I'm a very social person, but I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just brain dead. You know, I'm, I'm so not it's... really a handheld guy, but if yeah. I were, I probably would have been doing something like that after like an hour. That's just how I am. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, um, I I don't have much else to say other than uh, I think it's a good idea. I think it. Um, it, it's very good for a lot of um, a lot of people that want this kind of thing, but it, it's not for us um, in this present time. It might be one of those things that you know, uh, you know, uh, old man Stompy or I gets at at a later time if um, you know the accessibility is there, um, because it, it certainly has a very nice form factor. Uh, it's a very attractive system. Um, it. it uh, it looks like Easter when you look at all three next to each other. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, th- this was, this was super interesting to me. I didn't really think very much about this, but Nintendo picks some like pretty pretty unique. I I know that that uh, Lotus talked a little bit about branding, but Nintendo picked some pretty unique color schemes sure. for systems recently. I mean, like it used to be that everything was black or like one of the the you know colors of the rainbow. But like when I went, I, I actually bought uh, the uh, new 2DS. That's my my current handheld of choice. And the options were like purple, and then like a gray with an orange striping, and then I think it's like a black on electric blue. Hmm. It's pretty unusual for for system colors. Uh, it's even, pretty out even, there. Even the Nintendo sixty four had like ten different colors or something like that. There's a bunch of definitely interesting. Yeah, but looks. yeah, but they were they were all like they were all like clear. Pretty, so like for example, the controllers were similar colors, and it was like red, orange, yellow, yeah. green, blue. Okay, yeah. They were primary colors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I got you. Yeah, no, the, these definitely look like Easter candy um, to me. Um, but um, like, like I said, I, I, I think it's it's a good choice on their end. Um, uh, but you know, not for me, not yet. Um, probably not in the long term either. I, I just want to add one <clears throat> other exception, which is that like a lot of I know you labeled it as the little sibling device, but I know a lot of people, and you know, probably soon, including myself who found it useful because when they have children, their children are the ones who monopolize the television, and they as adults use the Switch because it's a handheld device. Oh, believe me, uh, you know, I'm in the I'm in the same boat, uh, mm. except, uh, you know, my significant other is the one that's using the TV, and I don't want to alienate her. Uh, sure. So, so um, you know, it... It's it's the same kind of thing, um, mm-hmm. you know. But I I do when I <laughs> I do like having the option of the TV out, I guess, and I'm not willing to sacrifice that in the overall picture, um, because it, it overall that to me that's the best experience. So for 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 Lotus Prince, clearly they need to make a Switch light TV. <laughs> no, pr- pretty much. That's kind of where I was hoping they would go. Like, you know, it would be easier if they didn't have to concentrate on portable. And then their Switch Lite is, like, only portable. I'm like, well... You know it would be great if they made exactly the product that I, as, as like, possibly the most rigid and rigorous consumer on the planet... Yes. ...would only buy. Yes. But exactly, you got it. <laughs> the, 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 the Switch Lotus. It uploads design. right to Lotus Prince's uh, YouTube channel without any configuration. <laughs> Really? You, you can, you and can only share... plays old Kingsfield games. <laughs> <laughs> but does it have a PlayStation exclusive game on it? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we we should move on to another topic here. There's plenty of other uh, cool things to talk about here. Um, <laughs> this week, um, uh, 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 this past week, uh, the Messenger, um, the Metroidvania, um, like. Ninja Gaiden-ish uh, game from Devolver Digital uh, just got free uh, DLC called Picnic Panic, and uh, it looks very neat. Uh, it's it's vacation themed, 
which is pretty cool. Uh, did you guys check uh, out uh, what this looks like? It looks pretty I, neat. I, saw I haven't shots, really. I'm not interested in the messenger. I, hmm. I haven't really had a chance to play the messenger yet. It's the kind of game that I, I I would play. It's a little weird to me that there's like kind of a, you know, a like kind of like an off the cuff like really goofy looking DLC for what looks like a pretty serious high fantasy game. Yeah, the color oh, scheme no, reminds me they, of Hotline Miami. They, uh, the messenger is very tuck in, tongue in cheek throughout. Um, it looks like it's serious, but it isn't. Uh, the dialogue is some of the goofiest shit I've ever read in my life. <laughs> uh, all the interactions with the shopkeeper, um, are, are pure gold. <laughs> but I, I will say this, that the DLC is free, which is always a good thing. Um, uh, you know, and they, they put the original game on sale, uh, to, to help boost sales too, and to get, uh, new people interested, but it definitely has, like, a massive car, uh, as pretty as it looks, it, 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 and you may think it, it's laid back, um, you know, v because it's vacation themed, but it, it mm -hmm. definitely has a massive core, um, like, twinge to it. Uh, there's, like, a lot of really deep, um, platforming puzzles, um, like some difficult stuff, like you you would see towards the end of uh, or in the D DLC of Guacamelee, like some really r really tough uh, platforming challenges. So, um, I think it looks neat. Uh, I'll be playing it because I already have the Messenger on Switch. So, um, whenever I get to that game, <laughs> you know, yeah. when I, when I have the like, like billions I said, of I'm, things, I'm gonna get to that and, and Guacamelee too, since you reminded me of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't played Guacamelee 2 yet. Uh, I am still playing Bloodstained, and uh, I, I'm going to just go right out and say it. It's my, probably my favorite Metroidvania. Um, well, 2D one, anyway. Uh, it's really, really, really good. Um, I don't know if I'd quite go that far, but it's, it is very good. It's, it's a little too, uh, like, it's, it's more railroady than it looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, like, there's usually only one new area you can go to at a time, so it doesn't really feel like there's a there's like a lot of free exploration once you get to the up once you get like new upgrades um, mm -hmm. but it's still very fun I like it a lot um, I mean it, it's not a perfect game uh, you know nothing is um, I, I actually think that uh, Symphony of the Night is very um, railroady too um, I, I don't think there's much um, divergent um, there's a certain point in the game and where, where you can go pretty much wherever you want it, in the uh Oh yeah, so so Symphony of the Night is is a bit like cheating because like the entire second half of Symphony of the Night is complete free roam, right? yeah. And like technically you've been through the whole castle, but sure. what what um what uh what the older Metroidvania games did a little bit better of a job of, and and also the like the actual Metroid Metroidvanias, aside from um the Samus Returns, the new one, mm -hmm. is that they give you, like, tastes of areas before you can freely explore them, and that's kind of what's so exciting about them a lot of the time. And Bloodstained mm. doesn't really do that. Aside from the waterway, there's not really any area that you can go to before you can, like, pretty much fully explore it, aside from maybe picking up a couple of treasure chests, which okay. actually makes the game a little tedious, because you, you know that you're never coming back to an area except to do optional stuff. Sure. Well, what's good about that is it gets you coming back. I mean, there's there are other things to do there as well. Um, uh, there's a lot of collect uh, collecting to go on in that game, uh, especially sure. if you're if you're doing the side quests. Um, so there are other reasons to go back uh, to to also get like the unique items that um, are unique drops from from mm -hmm. uh, enemies as well. Uh, I'm I'm just having so much fun with it. Uh, I haven't I haven't uh, had a game where I liked it quite this much in a in a while that that was like this. Um, so um, uh, I just wanted to quickly say that before we moved on. But uh, I've been, I've been playing that very steadily. Um, I pl I played a good chunk of it yesterday, and uh, well, I, it's 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 fitting because you talked about it last week. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, um, there. Are, uh, speaking of like throwbacks and things like that, um, Blazing Chrome was released this week as well uh, to Switch and PC, I think, and PS4. Um, this game it, apparently rules. It's um, a, it's made very much in the spirit of uh, Contra 3 Alien Wars. Um, people are even saying that it's even better than that game. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play it myself. 
but uh, that is high praise coming from like a lot of people that would normally be very critical of a uh, game like this. Um, I've seen people that have said, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like this this retro throwback quite as quite as much as the original. But I, uh, but those same people are saying that you know, Blazing Chrome is is really really freaking good. So uh, I'm excited to play that. I bought it on the Switch and I haven't even touched it yet, but. Um, I certainly intend to. Uh, I love running gun games. I love the Contra series, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to playing this game. I I've been following it for a long time. I've seen like a lot of videos on it, and it it looks great. And it looks like it it, it takes some definite cues from uh, from the Contra games just in terms of aesthetics. So I think they 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 kind of wanted to make a spiritual successor to Pro Protector more than anything because it's it's starring some robots. Uh, so that's I mean, a pretty yeah, cool idea. The, the, the actual Contra IP is still active and Konami is actually like making some pretty good games under it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, they're 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 coming out with a new one uh, by the end of the year, which right, is but, but pretty it's, cool. But it's it's diverged. It's become a little goofier than it's quite a bit goofier than than, than the like the original lineage of the <laughs> the, the retro Contra games. <laughs> yeah, ever since it hit Neo Contra, uh, the those games have all been uh, on the goofy side, really. Well, even uh, the last even three, Hardcore three titles. has some like goofiness to it. Oh, sure, sure. Um, hardcore Uprising. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, was it uh, Rebirth and um, Rebirth was bananas, uh, and and Neo Contra are all really goofy. <laughs> Rebirth had like intentionally bad translation. Yeah, uh, uh, Rebirth has probably my favorite story of any video game ever. <laughs> it's just stupid, <laughs> and it gets dumber the like the more you beat it, and the more like you you beat it on higher difficulties. It's just gets even dumber which is that that's what your reward is <laughs> i just love that attitude um <laughs> but uh yeah um speaking of m2 who, who did the rebirth game um they uh, announced that they are coming out with a new elist game um i don't know if you guys know anything about the elist games but uh i'm certainly excited about this nope not even a little <laughs> okay so um the elist um games were uh, a series of shmups made by Com Compile, the same company that made uh, Puyo Puyo before it was sil uh, swallowed up by Sega. Um, and Compile made games like Zanuck and Gunnack uh, for the NES. I'm sure you've heard those names before. Any other knacks? Um, yeah, I played, I played uh, Gunnack. What, what was that, uh, Lotus? Any other knacks? <laughs> no, they didn't make Knack either. Oh, <laughs> not, make not regular Knack, just Gun Knack. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Gun Knack and Zanak. Oh, okay. Um, but Zanak is actually kind of like a parodious version of, of Gun Knack. Uh, or Z uh, Zanak? Yeah, yeah Zanak. Sure. So anyway, um, uh, Elise is their, um, probably their flagship series uh, when they were when they were together. Um, they made a game called Musha for uh, the Genesis, which I've talked about many times, um, which is, is basically st um, a shmup starring a mech. Uh, they also made the Spriggan games, if you ever played uh, heard of those. I've heard um, of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they made Robo at least for, for Sega CD. Um, there's like a, a, a bunch of their games that are pretty popular with shmup fans. Um uh, Space Megaforce is another released game uh, for the Super Nintendo, one of the better shmups for the Super Nintendo. But anyway, um, they're making a brand new entry in the series. I'm really excited about that. Um, the series is famous for a um, a, a play style that uh, adapts to how you play, uh, which is really quite neat. So you really can't see the same patterns twice um, when you... Um, it's a very adaptive kind of system. Um, you play once exactly it sees... the same way a second time. Ever thought of that? Uh, you won't. <laughs> but what it's if you very... did? Well, I'm going to make a tool-assisted run just to prove you wrong. Uh, uh, it might not even do that. There might be some randomness to it. That would um, actually be kind of incredible. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the... These, these games are famous for that. It it adapts like once it sees that you're doing really well, it'll it'll change it up and give you a different type of enemy that you have to attack it in a different way or is weaker to a different type of weapon. Um, so that's what that 
that's famous for. So M2 said that they were going to release um, more news about it in August, um, which is pretty cool during one of their events. So um, I'm excited about that. I mean, uh, there's not much else to say other than what it, its name is. It's called Elise Branch. Um, uh, probably the most famous uh, Elise, which is called Musha, uh, is going to be on the um, Mega Drive Mini. So uh, that's pretty cool. So, um, you know, the, the, these games are kind of back in the limelight a little bit more than they had been. So um, maybe it's time that uh, something cool happens with them. I also wanted to say uh, real quick, I wanted to follow up on this story. I mean, I I, sp- <laughs> I complained about this uh, quite a bit the last episode, but uh, the Space Invaders Infinite Collection went on sale um Te- uh, on on Sunday, I guess technically on um, Monday for Japan, uh, I indeed did buy it uh, by <laughs> by get uh, signing into a 30 uh, day Prime trial um, on onto uh, Amazon.co.jp, and boy was that a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, and their website didn't fully um, like translate to English yeah, <laughs> either. Yeah. So it was a big pain in the ass. It was pretty harrowing because I, I wanted to be bu- be able to buy it and like also not be stuck with something that wasn't what I wanted. Um, they even had a version higher than the one that I wanted. Um, so not only did they have that special edition with the special DLC code, uh, they also have one with like tokens. Like it came with tokens and it was an extra forty bucks. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Um, so uh, four different versions of that game are, are being released on uh, from Japan, which is pretty crazy. But the 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 special edition doesn't just come with extra games. It comes with a board game, which is pretty neat. Um, it also comes with a, a pouch and um, also uh, replicas of the arcade um, like instruction cards, which oh, is nice. pretty neat. Um, so there is some cool stuff going on with it. The Darius uh, collection came with um, mini marquees, which was really neat. Um, and they were actually like plastic, like they were um, pretty heavy duty. So um, I, I, I was impressed by that. So um, these are really nice, but uh, they're very expensive. It was a, uh, it was what, uh, um, it was one thousand eight hundred yen, something like that. So. Um, it, it was quite expensive. Or is it eight, eight, 1,800 yen? Yeah, 1,800 yen. Or That's the same thing. Yeah, I'm sorry, 18,000 yen. <laughs> okay. so, sorry about that, 18,000 yen. So 180 bucks, essentially. So it was it was expensive. Um, it's also coming out in March, so <laughs> you have to be prepared for the long haul. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, but o- only that one day could you could you buy the uh, buy it with the extra game. <laughs> what a pain in the ass. Um, and uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but the um, the TurboGrafx 16 lo- uh, mini lineup was announced. I think uh, Lotus, you commented on it. Yeah, I know exactly one thing about it, which is that I think there's <laughs> probably uni- the most disappointing thing. <laughs> I know. I think it's like a universal release for like uh, Japan and not Japan. Yeah, so, I'm like, gonna go over this real yeah, quick. Like, like, so. Yeah, like like a bunch of systems just for the for context. A bunch of systems have like. This is the set of games that Japan is going to get, and on a completely different release, this is the set of games that the West is going to get. So if you want to get everything, you have to buy both systems. The Turbo Graphics, I think, is just the one release. So we're going to get some Japanese games, Japan's going to get some games that were more intended for the West. So I'll, I'll I'll go over the releases and um yeah. there are some great titles on there. I I don't want to go over um start this off with being negative because this is overall a very 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 nice um release. And there's uh, only like 50 list. games too. There there's there's over 50 games and the games that are included here are surprising and it's all the ones you ever wanted, really. So um it, it's a very impressive what they've what they've put together here. So um, overall, this is a very very good um, release list. I would recommend anybody that's interested or curious about the Turbo Graphics or a big fan uh, should pick this up, especially since uh, you know. Granted, if it has decent lag uh, timing and things like that, you know. Granted, if if it plays the games correctly. 
um, this will be a very, very good buy. Uh, so I'm going to go over them. Um, Alien Crush, immediately, fantastic game. Uh, one of the best console-only pinball games ever made. Um, probably only bested by its sequel, uh, which is is Demon De- Demon Crush. Um, this is a really, really good game made by Hudson. Um, it has some fantastic music, fantastic art. Uh, if you like pinball at all, uh, you'll love that game. Uh, Victory Run, which is kind of a um, uh, kind of a bad outrun clone, so I'm not paying much attention to that. Uh, Blazing Lasers, which is a fantastic game. Um, this was also made by Compile um, uh, and and published by Hudson, so um, by the makers of the Elise games that I just talked about. Um, one of the best schmuffs for the system. Uh, it was called Gunhead in Japan, um, but it was tied to a movie, so uh, they're only releasing the Blazing Lasers like North American version uh, for for good reason. Uh, so. To, to make sure that, you know, there's no license attached to it. Uh, these are all games in English, by the way. I'll, I'll tell you when it switches over. Uh, the original Newtopia, which is um, a uh, Zelda clone. Uh, it's a good Zelda clone, too. Um, probably on, around the same kind of quality as Golden Axe Warrior, which was a very good Zelda clone, I would say. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that, Lotus? I wouldn't know. I still have to look into it. Oh, okay. I, I would, I would, I would not say that. I bought it. It's on, um, <laughs> it's on, it's on PSN. I think both of them are, but definitely the first one is. Yeah, I, I have it on PS3. Oh, you mean Newtopia? Newtopia. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I actually never played through Newtopia nearly as much as Golden Axe Warrior, which I enjoyed. I, I, I tried pretty hard to play Zelda clones just because that's among my favorite genres, and I don't know, it's it's in the the bottom fifty percent. But, okay, gotcha. But I mean, I mean, if you're buying, so like in general, just to, to, to get a note in while you're going through the list, like sure. the the mini turbo is something that I would consider buying, even if the games are not like hits top to bottom, you know, because unlike the the Genesis, unlike the PlayStation Classic, unlike the Nintendo and the SNES, these are like not really games that were yeah. part of my childhood growing up. These are not games that are like trivi- trivially available on many of the online services. I mean, some of them, some of them you can you can find obviously. Like I played Utopia. A lot of them are purchasable or, or were purchasable via the eShop. You know when mm-hmm. when those services were running, but I didn't go out of my way to get them. So like this might be, you know, a, a, a nice way to get a, a chunk of the library without really trying. What I always told people about this uh, is I, I was into the TurboGrafx-16 uh, as a classic gaming system. I, I wasn't into it as, uh, you know, when it was coming out, but as a classic gaming system, I got, I got in before it got, like, super, super expensive. Um, but I love this system because it just, it, it's like the lost 16-bit system. Uh, and 16-bit era, for a lot of people, it, it, you know, our age is, is like the pinnacle of, of uh, you know, old-school gaming. So, um, you know, it's before it moved on to, you know, 32-bit and, and, and 3D gaming and that kind I of mean, thing. I that's, mean, that's why all these, like, $80 set-top boxes are being released. Sure. For, for more or less people our age who have the money to blow on something like that. For, for um, uh, something, something that hasn't necessarily aged all that great. <laughs> Well, I, I think a lot of these games have aged very well, um, and I'll, I'm going to continue with them. I'll, I'll keep okay. going. Okay. Um, so, uh, Dungeon Explorer, which is a serviceable um, clone of uh, of um, Gauntlet. Uh, we have R-Type, which is the North American version, which is thankful. Uh, the Japanese version was split into two games. Uh, just the first game was split into two games, but when it came over to America, they put it um, they put it all in one one package. Uh, this is a fantastic port of our type. It's not arcade perfect, but it's be- very freaking close. Um, you would be it, you won't be disappointed with it. Let's just put it that way. Um, Motor Rotor, which is um, a multiplayer game similar to RC Pro AM. Power Golf is a game that you should skip. <laughs> uh, a lot of their um, first party like sports games are are not worth um, anything. So um, Ease Book One and Two, which is a landmark release for the system, um, this is one of this one of the one of the games that people used to buy Turbo Graphics for. Um, so this you'll also notice that this is the first uh, CD game that I'm mentioning. 
Uh, so this is it, this is going to have CD games on it, which is fantastic. Uh, Ease Book One and Two is a fantastic game, um, especially this version of it. Uh, it's very very good. Only bested by the um, currently available um, Book One and Two for um, Book One and Two Complete on Steam. But this is still a really good version if you want it to look like a a 16-bit game. Um, it has awesome music too. Uh, it has its own music that is really really rocking i love this game i played it back in the day uh i played through both of them uh back when i was in college and i loved it uh you will not be disappointed by this it's a it's a it does have an old attack system but once you get used to it uh you'll find it a lot of fun rather than an, it, it being antiquated if you ask me that's, that's sort of what i mean though like i, I I'm, I'm sure the game is playable and like it might even be fun but there are like eight ease games now and all the other ones are probably more fun than this one <laughs> Um, maybe it has not its own. Easy. It has its own appeal to me, at least. Yeah, um, yeah. Just, just like you know, you're gonna spend you know fifty to eighty dollars or whatever on this system, and like the majority of these games, uh, I'm sure were were amazing for their time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure they're historically relevant and compelling to play now, for historical purposes. Um, but in almost all cases, like the gameplay has evolved, and probably for less than eighty dollars, you can buy a game in each of these genres, one after another, that is better. There <laughs> are a few that are uh, pinnacle titles, and I'll, we'll, we'll get to them. Sure. Um, they they really haven't been bested by much, or uh, you would still have a freaking great time with. So, um, Ninja Spear is a timeless game. We went, actually went over this last week because the arcade version of this was just ported to the Switch. Uh, this is a very, very, very good port. This is a lot of fun. Uh, so you'll you'll have a lot of fun with that. JJ and Jeff is a goofy game <laughs> that had um, that was based off of a um, off of a, a comedy duo in Japan originally, and then they reskinned it for America. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I, without that context, it's a I guess it's less fun. Um, Space Harrier is a decent port of Space Harrier. You could probably find much. A bit better version, we already of, space have better version of space harrier in so, um, within other video games yeah that's true uh, within yeah, the yakuza and yeah um actually i i would i would say that uh if you're gonna play space harrier uh the 3ds version is the best version um but the switch version that, that is coming out soon will be even better uh so you'll you'll want to wait for that uh, that's made by our friends from m2 as well um, Military Madness, uh, this is a really great strategy RPG for the system before, um, those types of games got really big. Um, that one, that one's fun. It's very similar to, um, Advance Wars, or something like that. It's called Nectaris, uh, this series is called Nectaris, and it's sold like that now. Um, there are other games in this, later games in the series, but it's, this one's very good. Chu Man Fu, um, which is, a, like, an overhead, um... Uh, racist yeah, character. I was gonna say, wait a um, no, uh, uh, it's a, like an overhead um, like puzzle, um, like kind of like Bomberman looking kind of. Uh, it's a fun game, uh, but not essential. Psychosis. This is a cool g- game because it's a shmup, but it has like um, all kinds of weird uh, like nightmare fuel in it while you're playing it. Uh, all the all the like levels are based off of like weird crazy shit that you would see in the nightmare which is pretty neat uh it's unique in that respect bonk's revenge revenge which is the um uh the primary um platformer series uh for um the system bonk's revenge is not the second game it's an excellent game very 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 good um parasol stars the sequel to bubble bobble um which is an uh Arcade port, I believe. No, no, no. Uh, this is a unique game. I forgot about that. This is a unique game. It uh, had no arcade port. Uh, so um, there's also another sequel called uh, Rainbow Islands, and that was in the arcade. Uh, you have Kadash, which is another Taito uh, port that is very, very good. Um, one of the best ports of that one, in fact. Uh, these these last two games, Parasol Stars and Kadash, are also working designs games so they must have gotten rights from uh the rights holders for those translations which is kind of cool uh new adventure island which is probably my favorite adventure island game 
Uh, this is very, very good. Um, Airzonk, which is a shmup featuring uh, uh, Bonk's Descendant. Uh, very, 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 very fun game. Um, very cartoon-like. Uh, you have Newtopia 2, which is supposedly a lot better than Newtopia 1. Uh, Soldier Blade, which is probably my favorite uh, in the Star Soldier series. I love this game. It is fantastic. This is um, probably my favorite shmup on the system. It is excellent. Uh, it hasn't been bested by very many other, sh even modern shmups. It is very freaking good. I definitely recommend this. Um, Lords of Thunder. Have have either of you played Lords is of Thunder? Another uh, shoot 'em up. Yeah, this is a shmup, but it has a butt rocking soundtrack. It's really, really awesome. It has like a fantasy is Lords of uh, landscape. Like Force? No, uh, but I could see where you get that. Um, a Thunder Force was made by uh, Technosoft, and this oh, was oh, wait, made wait, by wait. Hudson. Thunder Force was like Genesis, right? Okay, okay. Correct. But yeah, no, I, I don't... But Lords of Thunder uh, actually later came to the oh, Sega yeah, CD. Yeah. So but yeah, like, like, I don't off. play yeah. shoot 'em ups And like, you, you know how the Neo Geo mostly had fighting games? Like, the, the Turbo Graphics is sure. largely shoot 'em ups So like, I'm not interested in like 80% of its library. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, well, yeah, of course I love shmups, like, so yeah, you're, you're uh, I'm all over this. Like, yeah. There's like five Turbo Graphics games that I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> well, one of them being Legendary Axe. Those games are fun. Was, was, was that the one? Was that uh, but anyway, the uh, guy fought you with the ball and chain. Yep. Yeah, that shit was bananas. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Lords of Thunder has probably uh, like top tier uh, soundtracks in, on the system. It's really, really good. Uh, you would love the well, music, Lotus. We'll, it's like hardcore well, yeah, like, thrash one metal. Thing I will give almost every shoot em up ever made is the soundtracks are great. Um, and I mean, it's funny you mentioned mm -hmm. soundtracks. I was, I was thinking, like, I heard... I forgot what it was called, like, Metal Clash or something, but, like, uh, there's a particular track in Thunder Force 4 that sounds as close to, like, thrashing guitars in metal that the Genesis could get away with. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, this is amazing. If you just pop this CD into your uh, into your car, it's, yeah, like, like, really, 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 really good. Yeah, like, CDs soundtracks, like, that, that would be insane. Yeah, the, the Lords of Thunder was a CD game, and it, it used it, it used its its nice. abilities to to its fullest. Um, and Bomberman '93, which is the last one that was released in English, uh, fantastic game. Um, so especially if you you have access to the last one you know, released in English. Haven't you heard no. of Bomberman Zero, the best Bomberman game ever made? <laughs> the The last one released in English uh... on the Turbo Graphics. <laughs> So, um, the, the next, um, few are, uh, so that's all the ones that are going to be in English. Um, th these are going to be the Japanese titles. Um, most of these, uh, some of these are, are, have some overlap. So you have, um, you know, Military Madness, Dungeon Explorer, and Utopia, uh, Ease Books, Books 1 and 2. Um, those are, are pretty understandable. Newtopia 2. Um, and all of... Uh, all the rest are unique. So you have <laughs> China Warrior or the Kung Fu, <laughs> the Kung Fu. Um, which is pr it's called the Kung Fu in ja in Japanese. It's terrible. It looks really really nice if you look up a picture of it, but it, with gigantic sprites. But it plays like shit. Um, uh, a okay version of Fantasy Zone, which, which again has um, been there are other like better versions. Game ever made, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is unique. You don't see this too much. Uh, a croquet game called Gate Ball. Yeah, how many croquet video um, games exist? Is it just this one? <laughs> the only one that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Super Darius, which is uh, a great version of Darius. And, can, and it's but, a shooter, um, so like, you, know, we have... you can get away with it easily without knowing Japanese. And it won't cost you $180 yeah, well, to that, get. Yeah, well, that's one thing um, I like about these classic <laughs> systems. It's like Earthbound without costing $500. Like a sweet. Yeah, but that was that was my uh, my dig at, you know, the, the Darius collection oh, that okay, just came okay. out. 
Uh, super, 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 uh, super Star Soldier, which is uh, another part of the Sol- Star Soldier series, which is also a fantastic game on it, in, in its own right. Um, uh, Dai Maikamura, which is Ghouls oh, and Ghosts, sure. very good version of du- Ghouls and Ghosts. It's also a wait, super wait, graphics it's, it's, game. It's specifically so this Ghouls is the and Ghosts, like it's it's like the one on the Genesis. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So th- it, it's more arcade. Yeah, the Genesis uh, perfect. was definitely different from the arcade version. I'm also curious just for the soundtrack, just because the Genesis sound chip is so quirky. Like, I just kind of want to hear what some other systems soundtrack would sound like. Out of all the different versions of Ghouls and Ghosts, like arcade, uh, the Genesis version, and the PC Engine version, I'm going to say that the Genesis one is is still my favorite. But this one's a very good version, and it's a super graphics game. So it actually has all of the formats of the Turbo Graphics um, in this collection. Aldenus is the the lone... um, Super graphics exclusive shmup, which is, um, it's a pretty nice looking game. Uh, Port of the Original Gradius, which is excellent. Uh, they added an extra level to it, I believe. Uh, let's see here. A bad port of Ninja Gaiden, the original (laughs) Ninja Gaiden. (laughs) Um, it's not the arcade game. It's a, it's actually a port of the NES game. Yep. Um, and Star Parodier, which is an excellent excellent game. It's like Parodius, but for Star Soldier games. Oh, so Soldier um, Parodier. A fantastic... Okay, like, they both do the stupid yep. name thing. That's great. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's very, very much on the nose. Um, a fantastic port of Gradius 2. Um, might be my favorite port of Gradius 2. That's uh, a very, very, very good version. Uh, the original Choniki. Oh, yeah, now I'm buying a Turbo <laughs> Graphics. <laughs> Actually, that game's on PSN, um, but still. Prob- uh, probably the best game in the series. Oh, yeah, actually, um, the original Show and Nikki would be uh, different from the one on PSN, wouldn't it? Like the PS1 Saturn game? That's different than the Turbo Graphics one, isn't it? Uh, that's the third there game. There we go. That's the third shmup, Crazy. I should say. I, I gotta that's pick up every Show and Nikki game for um, all there's... the lore. I need the fighting game on Super Famicom. I need the Wonderswan RPG. <laughs> I gotta see where this all goes. <laughs> you need them all. For those of you that don't know, it's a, sh- it's a shmup series featuring um, uh, nearly yeah, naked it's like men. Japan- <laughs> it's like Japan's like homosexual man stereotype, which is just like super muscly and not wearing too terribly much. Yeah, uh, definitely a yes. kitsch series for sure. Um, but this this is an essential title uh you can get this elsewhere now but it it means something in the context of this um castlevania dracula Mm -hmm. x rondo of blood um probably the best game for the system um it is available on the ps4 right now in english um but it's still worth playing in in this context um Bomberman uh, 94, which is the final release of Bomberman on the system, it is the one to play because it has um, it's kind of the most features. kind of interesting that the Western release has 93 and the Japan library has 94. I mean, I, I know that there's yeah. text in Bomberman, so there is something to that, but it's just kind of amusing. Yeah. 94 well, is yeah, easily it's played, a Bomberman so game. Just play 94. Like, I mean, there is a plot, but whatever. Um... Toki Meki Memorial, which you won't be playing. We talked about this uh, for the Igavinia episode. Uh, uh, Igarashi's first game here. Um, you will not be playing this if you don't know English. Japanese. Or don't know Japanese. Yeah, no way. Um, it's a da- it's a visual novel, dating sim. Uh, it, it'll be impossible for you to play. Um, then there's Panic Bomber, which is a uh, kind of like Puyo Puyo, but with Bomberman. And uh, you also have Sapphire, which is um, probably the prettiest and most infamous shmup on the system. Uh, it required you to have an arcade oh card, and it, it um, it, that is a special card that would increase the RAM capabilities of your system. Even a Super Graphics game uh, couldn't play it. Um, it is a beautiful game. You will not believe that it is a PC Engine game, uh, for good reason. 
Um, but it's also infamous because uh, it was an it, it is and was a very expensive game for a very long time. It was probably the most expensive game for the system at one point. Uh, and then a whole bunch of bootlegs got circulated into those. Um, and it's very, very, very difficult to tell um, which ones are real and which ones aren't. If you, unless you have an expert there with you while you're buying it and you're looking right at it. Uh, I w would not recommend ever buying this game for real <laughs> because of that. Um, but as a result, uh, you can now get it very easily. It's a very good game and worth playing. Um, and the final My one, <laughs> then the most yeah. infuriating thing, um, the PC Engine version yeah, so of like Snatcher. Uh, is on this, yeah, this which is fantastic, because, but it is like, only in English. Snatcher <laughs> was released on like every available system in Japan at the time, like the MSX, the the, the PC Engine, um, like various other. Co That's PS One. PS One. I I, was, I, mean, I got Saturn too, right? Did I get Saturn? But yeah, yeah like, in Saturn America, version, we only got it on the Sega CD, so it's like a niche game for a niche system, and like no one knew about it. And that's why it's so rare and expensive now. So this is going to be the second time that Snatcher will have been officially brought over to America. Now it's the Turbo Graphics version. Too bad it's not translated. So like, all right, yeah. it's Japanese only. Yeah, it, it's it's a big shame because this is a really great version of this game. Um, it c came out around the same time as the Sega CD version. Uh, the Sega CD version was not released in Japan. Um, so it this. It was kind of like they released the Sega CD version for us and the PC Engine version for everybody in Japan because it, they're basically the same thing. Um, there, there's only very slight differences between the two. Um, and um, I think the PC Engine version was like the leading, the lead platform to finish up the Snatcher saga because when he made it for the PC originally, he only got mm. like halfway through the game. Um, so... Uh, that's the disappointing part, but everything else is freaking great. Um, I will not be picking this up because I own all of these you games. <laughs> uh, I okay, own okay, a bootleg okay. of Sapphire <laughs> that I knowingly bought uh, for ten go. bucks. Good so, <laughs> um, but I own everything else legitimately. Um, I actually own Sapphire legitimately a couple different ways. Believe it or not, I, I own it. Uh, for the PSP. It actually nice. came out for the PSP. Yeah. But uh, everything else I actually own a legitimate copy. I even own El Eldeness and um, and Daimai Kimura. So, cool stuff. But, um, uh, Old Man Stompy, you said you were going to pick this up? Uh, I, I said that, but I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I said Remember when I said I picked up a Turbo Graphics? Um, I lied. <laughs> I think this is very much worth it. Um, this is... Y there is no notable game really missing from this other than maybe, like, the other two Bonk games. Um, all the rest of these games are, like, the essential games um, for for this. And honestly, I'm not all that upset about the other two Bonk games. Um, it has the best shmups for the system, and it has Castlevania. Yeah, it's, it's so, a good time. Um, this is a re this is a really good list. So um, we're gonna move on here from here. Um, I'm I'm just gonna make uh, uh, one quick thing. Uh, so so that um, uh, old man Stompy can actually uh, you know talk a little bit here. But um, I just w quickly want wanted to say that um, uh, we talked about devotion. Uh, I yes. believe uh, coming um, being taken off of Steam a little while ago. Uh, because of censorship reasons, um, I'm not going to get into um, you know the reasons why. Um, it was it, other, other than it, it was it was there was some criticism of the Chinese government. Uh, the makers of the game said that it will not be going back up on Steam anytime soon, if at all. Um, this is a big shame. This is real censorship at, at, at um, you know at work here, and. Um, I very am, am very sad that this is this is happening to them, and they're they're being dogpiled on by by a bunch of people that um, you know support the Chinese government as well. So it, it's 
it's really um, unfortunate. And uh, they didn't mean to release it like that, or at least they're, they're saying they, they didn't mean yeah, to. Whether they did or they so, didn't, um, like, of it's, course it's a really they big say shame. they didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, um, but, but I mean, like, it would be insane to live in Taiwan and, and think that it would be okay... You know that 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 no one would ever yeah, find your, like, yeah. secret messages. People data mine the shit from your nose the Chinese government, <laughs> especially like knowing that you're expecting to. So like like reportedly this stuff was discovered extremely quickly during like streams of the game yeah. on on Chinese streaming services that were watched by thousands of people. So like of yeah. course it was going to be uncovered. Uh, it, it cannot have been intentional by the publisher. Uh, to, to make such a strong political statement, which is a shame because like art should be political, uh, and and is political, um, and they should be free to say um, what they said too. And um, like it's it's unfortunate that Steam probably isn't even on their side as a, as a publisher because they're probably more concerned with like having to fight uh, for their right to access the Chinese market than of the rights of the small developer. Yeah, I have to say, out of all of the edge cases for and reasons to censor somebody, this is amongst the most important one to defend um, the rights for. Uh, you should be able to criticize your own own government um, because that is the thing that is most important uh, when, when it comes to freedom of speech. Um, being able to criticize your government and not even fear that you, you may be locked up or in, or have your rights stripped away or, or any privileges stripped away um, for not liking how things are being run. Uh, we should be critical of, of the people in charge, if you ask me. Um, but um, always, it, nobody gets a free pass. But that's just me. But uh, this is real awful censorship at its worst at its worst um you know this isn't simply like a a, a sexual a taste in sexuality or even um you know worried uh, worried about somebody being worried about um offending somebody's religion or something like that this is a, a pure case of um of, of political censorship and i i just really hate that it's happening to them so yeah, that that ran a little bit longer than I uh, expected. I uh, I ended up giving a short review of <laughs> a lot of the uh, the Turbo Graphics games here. But um, anyway, uh, I think it's a really good buy, and uh, that will be the show for this week. Uh, we'll 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 continue on uh, next uh, recon. Uh, we have some other things that aren't quite as timely to go over uh, in the next week, but uh, it will still be interesting things to talk about. So uh, please uh, remember to subscribe to the Corrective Consciousness YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While there, please give us thumbs ups, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. It helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Thursday for our sister podcast, Corrective Consciousness, uh, where we will have a nice um, episode uh, where uh, Old Man Stumpy will go over the uh, current. Uh, goings on in the, in the wrestling world. Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, Twitter, uh, Switch, and Battle.net. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. Hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, and getting involved in uh, discussions with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprince. And you can find me as Old Man Stompy on most major gaming and social media networks, or I'll be foregoing the TurboGrafx-16 Mini while waiting for the TurboGrafx-17. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Ooh. Just slightly better than the uh, Super uh, Graphics uh, and, and all those uh, attachments. I do believe I gave Vice <laughs> the Vapors. <laughs> <laughs> the papers. Well, they they did have a follow up that nobody liked called the uh, PCFX. So, um, well, they, they didn't you know. use my name. That's good. I can still, <laughs> I can still make some money off of it. <laughs> yeah, that w it, w it was. It's a total waste of a system. Don't even bother pursuing it. But anyway, uh, we will catch you on Thursday. Until next time, everyone. Cheers.